Okay, uh, we're starting the Strat Hayim, uh, the Ariya Kadosh, a little Hagdama before we start. I don't want to make the Hagdamas too long, because when, when you do too much introduction, it's so good the introduction, the rest of the stuff kind of like, you know, simmers down. And uh, obviously there's much hype in the first year and stuff like that, and the uh, subsequent year is less and less and less and less. But we're going to try to make this as simple as possible. Okay, because I know we're not all here coming from uh, Panovich Yeshiva and we all have Pulim minds and stuff like that. We're going to try to keep this simple. Uh, the Otsrat Hayim of the Ariya Kadosh, which, which we're going to be studying, <coughs> first of all, our Shior is the uh, Zecher, Morin Rabbeinu, Rav Tzion Bracha, and uh, also Nishmat Sabati, Tzipor Abad Adina, and Nat Lachat Kolam Yisrael. Everybody comes to the Shior, but you guys uh, find your uh, success in life. Um, so the, uh, the Otsrat Hayim, what is the Otsrat Hayim, right? So we have a father of, of modern secrets of the Torah, modern Kabbalah, is the Ariya Kadosh of Benitza Gloria Ashkenazi. Now when I say Ashkenazi, it's just a surname because he was Faradi the Chol Dawar. Uh, he had an Egyptian mother and his father was Ashkenazi. Obviously his father passed away when he was a young boy. He was raised in Egypt and uh, through immense work in Torah, he reached the level where he, that where nobody has reached this level in a very long time, in a very long time, where he was actually able to speak and learn with Eliyahu and Avi face to face, flesh to flesh. Uh, even the Rashash, according to the Ben Ishchai, didn't reach this level. Of course, many disagree, but the Ariya Kadosh, which is an acronym for Adonai Rabbi Yitzchak, was such a chacham. He was able to learn Gemara six different ways and the seventh way he was able to to translate in a Kabbalistic way he was such a it was uh, it's something like this is uh, once in a once in Jewish history it's mamash once in Jewish history so the Ariya Kadosh when he gave over the secrets of the Torah he knew everything in the one of his books called Sharo HaKodesh which is a gate of how to reach divine inspiration when I say divine inspiration, it's not prophecy. Prophecy is you actually get a clear message. Divine inspiration is a message where you, you have to kind of decipher what God is telling you, okay? Ruach HaKadosh is not what we think it is. Like, oh, uh, somebody comes to me and tells me, should I marry this girl? And I go to a rabbi, Ruach HaKadosh tells me, yes, this girl is good for you. That's not Ruach HaKadosh, it's Shtuyot. That's Shtuyot, okay? Even in time of the Beit HaMikdash, when they would go to the Kohen Gadol and they would ask him a question, he would have to decipher the message. I mean, it wasn't just the stones lit up and, you know, let's play musical chairs here. That he would have to decipher the message. Sometimes they would decipher it actually the wrong way. The wrong way and then it would come Horban, like in the story of Pelagish Begiva. And the first time when they asked the Kohen Gadol and they deciphered it incorrectly. So there were times in Jewish history where the Ruach HaKodesh was translated in a different way. And there were times where the, there was a lot of prophets, and there were times when there was a little bit amount of prophets. Right now, we're going through a bit of a dry spell. The Jewish people are extremely dry right now. It's been 2,000 years since a prophet, since we've had a prophet. I wouldn't say it's been a long time since we had Balei Ruach HaKodesh. We do have Balei Ruach HaKodesh. I don't know who they are in our generation. I'm sure there were a lot. There are a lot. They're hidden somewhere. But it comes through immense work. It's not like any guy who knows how to learn Gemara as Ruach HaKodesh, which is... Some things, some people just don't get it. It just doesn't work like that, okay? Uh, just because you're a Rebbe doesn't necessarily mean that you have a never shown shemach ha'yechida. It takes a lot of immense work. So the, the way to get to Ruach HaKodesh, the way to get to Hashem is to, to know about Him. And the way to know about Him is to learn the secrets of the Torah. And the Ariya Kadosh did that the best. He was just the best at it, okay? And uh, when he, he, was, he was so smart... He couldn't write because he had so many ideas and I said when he would try to think of something, he would just like come out like a mishka bottle. He had a student called Rav Chaim Vital and this student had the amazing intellect and ability to put everything on paper because you, you, writing is a, is a skill. And, said, and Rav Chaim Vital obviously he was Mashiach, he was supposed to be Mashiach and he was the Gilgul of Rabbi Akiva and the Ariya Kosh was the Gilgul of Rabbi Eliezer Agado. Um, they had a couple of Gilgulim going on over there. It was a nice balagan. But uh, the main thing, this was Rabbi Akiva and this was Rabbi Eliezer Agadol. And it was, uh, they were just immense people, just immense people. And Ariya Kadosh said that the way he reached his level was through 
immense simcha when he did mitzvot. By doing mitzvot with immense simcha, he reached, this was one of the ways he reached, this was one of his main ways he reached his level. And uh, Rav Chaim Vital suffered from depression. When, what I mean depression, many Tamidech Chaim suffer from this. When they do a, an Avera, suddenly it's like their world broke down on them. Like, we made one mistake and suddenly that's it. Hashem hates us, this and Rav Chaim Vital, when he used to have carry in the night, when he used to have a, a seminal emission, it was like the end of the world for him. Now, says, relax, don't worry. It can happen from food. It can happen from this. Don't, it's not the end of the world. Be besimcha, you know. Be besimcha. It's not something Rav Nachman Breslov came up with. It's, it's not what he. It's not him. It's, it's just, the Torah says that. It's not. It's not a chidush. I mean, maybe he put it out there, but it's not a chidush. Now, when Ariya Kadosh gave over his Torah, he didn't want to give it over to his, to students. He didn't want to. He said, "I came to this world for you, Rav Chaim Vital." And uh, Chaim Vital wrote, that, wrote it down, but he, but he forced him to bring in students, too. And uh, b- that caused many problems later on. And the works of the Arya Kadosh was, was written down in three different books. The book that we're going to focus on is called Otsrot Chaim. Okay? Otsrot Chaim is known as Madura Tinyana. What's Madura Tinyana? It's the second version. What's the second version? This book was... In the ground, Rav Chaim Vital didn't want anybody to learn it. He buried it. He buried it, and it took two big rabbis. One of them was the Chida's grandfather. He, they made special yichudim incantations on his grave, and they asked him permission to dig it out. Permission. They dug out this book, and the reason why everybody likes learning this book, this is the only book that Rav Chaim Vital wrote with pristine precision. That means he wrote it down in complete order. Usually, Kabbalists have a problem. They cannot be so uh, they, they organized because it's so many ideas and they all connect. Because Torah really is one connection. So they're all over the place. And this book he wrote with pristine, it's like everything he wrote down in order. It's complete Hishtal Shalut. Complete Hishtal Shalut. So people love learning this book because you can't go wrong with it. Okay? It's called Otsrot Chaim. Why did he call it Otsrot Chaim? Obviously, because his name was what? Chaim. Chaim. So Otsrot Chaim means the treasures of Chaim. Okay, he wrote this book down by himself. So this is a, this is also known as this is his actual handwriting. Now everything he wrote, he wrote from the words of the Ari Kadosh. So it's like you're right now, guys, basically learning the words of the Ari. And obviously, because you guys are learning it, it means that you have some sort of connection in your last Gilgul to this stuff too. Because it's not just okay, I came to Otzot Chaim Shur. Yeah, there is a connection. There's a, there's a there's a soul connection. Okay, now. I know people have this certain thing, oh, I learned Kabbalah, that's it, I'm going to go crazy right now. I'm telling you right now, in history, more people have gone crazy from Gemara and Kabbalah. Okay? It's just people make a big deal out of it. You're not going to go crazy. No, nothing bad is going to happen to you. A missile is not going to fall from Aza on you. Nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to live fine. You're going to be fine. Nothing's going to happen. Okay? You're going to learn how to be close to Hashem. That's it. You want to be close to Hashem, you have to know about Him. You want to know about Him, this is the Limud. Okay? So this is what we're going to start with today. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read, I'm going to translate, I'm going to explain. Okay, obviously you guys, if you guys want to learn this, you have to get your own book. Okay, unless you guys want a copy. Okay, but I, I suggest to get a book, you come to me, you give me the 20 bucks and I'll get you a copy. It's not a problem, okay? So the Trot Chaim starts, the first char of a Trot Chaim is very hard. Very little, very little commentary was written on it because you have to understand that Let's pretend that this is every. Let's pretend that this whiteboard is everything. Okay, we can. A human being can only fathom something that has a border, that has a limit, because we ourselves are finite. Right. We can't understand something that's infinite. And the first page of the Alshot Chaim, in the first couple of lines, it 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 tries. It's the words of the Ari. He tries to. It it does. It explain why Hashem wanted to create the world. And we have to understand that we cannot understand that. If, when, to, when you get to this limud, you have to understand two things. You're never going to know why God created the world, why He decided to do it. You could only understand why He created the world once He decided to create the world. But you can't understand why He created the world to begin, to begin with. You understand? It's only once He decided to create it, we can understand why He did that. But before that, we can't understand why the idea even came up to Him. Because God is the idea, He's the one thinking, and He's the actual creator. creator. He's the creator, He's the creator, He's the, the Rambam called Hua Mada, Hua Yodea, Hua Neda. He's, he's just, you can't understand something like it, you understand? 
it, it's amazing what Hashem really is, and we're speaking about the Creator of the world. You're gonna, you guys are gonna come to the uh, obvious uh, this shiur, but that Hashem, you're gonna come to the realization where you know that you're breathing, you're living, and you're inside Hashem right now. And all this is just an illusion. The fact that there is space between me and you is an illusion. Matrix. Not right. <laughs> so let's, not, let's not say those words. So <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, those guys, they tried taking ideas from this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they did. They took ideas from this. They, guys, let's not, you know, uh, I don't want to get bad comments on this, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but it's true. But what, you're going to see why I'm telling you this. Space and time is an illusion. It's something that was created. Okay, really, there's no space and time between. It. That's why you know you could be a, you could be. What's the the thing you most you love most inside this world? What is it? Come on, first answer. What does a father say? No, food. His, I, love. <laughs> I love food too. But you love to eat food. Your kids, you love your kids the most, right? And you know, but uh, you could be far away from your kids, but you sometimes you feel like they're right next, right to, next to you, right? Because the bond is so great that. Space and time just don't exist between you and your kids, right? You just they're there next to you, okay? Right? Also, sitting with your wife because love, you can, we're gonna learn is the one thing that can break all boundaries. Love is limitless. Okay, fear on the other hand is something that's limited. Okay, let's learn. Okay, let's learn. Let's not get into uh, theological, uh, <laughs> philosophical stuff because we're, this is not a philosophy class. Okay, there's a difference between a ph philosopher. A Kabbalist and a Chassid. There, th there are three kinds of people. There's a ph yeah, I'm serious. There's a philosopher, right? Like the Italian rabbis. They were all philosophers, right? The Rashba was a philosopher, right? Some say he's a Mukubal, but oh, I don't want to get into it. He was a philosopher. If you look at his books, okay? Then you have the Kabbalists, like the Ariya Kadosh, the Rashash, Then you have the Chassidim, right? They have their own way of looking at, at, at everything, right? It's three distinct things, okay? Hagdam, so the Ariya Kadosh starts, the Ustrat Hayim. Hagdama Achat Kodesh. First, I gotta give you an introduction. He said, this book is an introduction. All this is just because you're never gonna know the actual book. I'm just gonna give you an introduction, and Bezrat Hashem, when you're gonna get the introduction, you'll be able to fathom the actual story. But you gotta, you gotta reach it out yourself. It's your own journey. Okay? So, Hagdama Achat Kodesh, Mina En Sof Adza. First of all, we have to understand one thing. So, it says, I'm giving you an introduction right now from the En Sof. From the end of until za. What's end of? What's za? No end. Okay. End of means no end. So obviously the only thing without an end is what? God. It's God. So Hashem, Hashem. His real name isn't. He doesn't have a name. Hashem. It, it, the Hashem means the name. <laughs> he he has no name. He has nothing. He's just limit. He's, he's limited. Everything. He's every. He's everything and nothing. And he's he's limited. He just he's end self. Okay. So could you imagine what the God that chose us is? He's the creator of the world. Is just end self. There's no name for him. This, this name Yudke Vafke. It depicts something. It's something that was created. Okay. But really, God has no name. God is limitless. He's end self. So this book is an introduction from the end self, the beginning. Well, before the beginning, until ZA. What's ZA? ZA is a system. It really stands for Ze'er Anpin. It's one of the systems that, are, that are, were created in the world of Atzilut. In the world of, there's four worlds. Atzilut, Beria, Yitzira, and Asiya. We're down here, right? This is Atzilut. It's the world of God. So when you say we're here... We're in the bottom. Earth? Or yeah, Earth. Okay. About Earth the, the materialistic world, okay? Oh, okay? All the galaxies, everything. The world of Atzilut is up here, right? The, every world has five systems. <coughs> the fourth system is called Zat. In every world. It's an acronym for Zer and Pin, okay? What does it mean? It means the small system. That means there's a big system. Okay? Za is called... It's, it's when, basically when God gets angry. When God gets angry, he's called Zah. Okay? But that's all, it's, it's an illusion. Because really God is angry and happy at the same time. We have to understand that and not understand it at the same time. Okay? It means, we have to understand that life is a paradox. It's a Pandora's box. Okay? Because it's like you and your wife. How do two 
different genders, two different ways of thinking. We have to live in the same house together. God likes opposites. Chesed, Givura, Cain, Hevel, Yaakov, Esav, Yosef, and his brothers. It's all about taking two opposites and bringing harmony between them, right? That's why God loves the Yusot, because <coughs> it's the bridge. So it says, it's a, this book is an introduction from the end sof until Za. I told you there's five systems. Za is only the fourth system. What happened to the fifth system? The fifth system is called the Nok. The Nok is really another name for the Shekhinah. God's divine presence. When God wants to reveal Gabriel, when God wants to reveal himself. So that means in this book we're not going to discuss the Nok. We're just going to discuss Za. Of course not. This book goes through the whole thing. So some people say that this sentence is a typo. Okay? It's a typo. That means this sentence was added in afterwards, but afterwards by the people who made the book, who, who printed the book. Mm-hmm. Some people say, no, really the fifth system is just, is just latching onto the fourth system. So when I explain to you the fourth system, za, I will automatically explain to you, look, the shekhinah, okay? The fifth is nothing new. <laughs> It's all, it's just the, yeah, the fifth is just the, is just the connection. It's it's the female aspect of the fourth of za. Okay, so therefore it's the same thing. Okay, the point is that this book doesn't just discuss from the end sof until za. This book will discuss everything, everything until the no. Okay, you're gonna learn about Rachel, Leah. You're gonna learn about everything. The Shechina, the Chorban Beit Hamikdash, how the Egel, what what happened when the Jews made the golden calf, how it was broken, what did Moshe do by breaking the first set. Every, every, you're gonna learn everything. Okay, so don't worry. We're <coughs> gonna be here a while. <coughs> We're gonna be here. Where he, I mean, <laughs> it depends on you. I'm here, but <laughs> it all depends on on uh, if the Torah wants to keep you inside. Because, like I explained to you guys many times, this Torah is alive, alive more than many other ones. This Torah actually is able to spit you out if you're not ready. This Torah is also a very big. Why is this Torah a little dangerous? A little, because this Torah you could do in one hour, what you can't do learning Gemara in months. Okay, the, the, the amount of sparks that this is bringing up when you're learning is a huge amount. Okay, because not that many people learn, it's rare. It's like finding a diamond. You understand? But they're valuable. This, this is even more valuable. Of course, everything is valuable. Okay, continuing. Da. No, says the Ari. Kitchilat kol, The beginning of everything. Before everything ever started. Let's say, like, not the beginning, because the beginning. Absolutely. Means that uh, there was a start. There There's no start of it. Before everything happened, before time was created, it didn't exist. Time is something that's created. So before time was created, right? When I say there is time, like right now it's ten fifteen. Ten fifteen is something that created. That means what does it mean? It was created. It was something that came before it. This is before everything. Okay. Time means that there is space between me and you. What's time? I have to go from point A to point B. It took me time. If everything is just God. It means what? No There's no time. So that with kilat hakol, haya kol ha-metziyut, all the metzies, <clears throat> all the, all of the uh, existence, if you could call it that even, was or pashut. It was, what does that mean, or pashut, a simple light? What's or pashut? Just call it or. Why or pashut? Anything that's simple is, is godly. The simpler it is, the more connected to God it is. The more... Advanced. advanced, the more uh, detailed something is, the farther you're getting away from Hashem. Why? Because Hashem is just one thing. The closest thing you could think when you're thinking of Hashem is water. Why? When you look at water, it looks like it's just one being. Right. It's of course it's not, because it's, God forbid to even compare the two, but just to give you a mashal, water, when you look at the ocean, it's just like it's just one being. One when you look at the earth, it's just like there's mountains and there's a river in between. The Hashem is just an Orpashut. To say Orpashut is just one being. He's not made up of parts. He doesn't have a hand and fingers. He is there, To say that God has a hand or fingers or eyes or a mouth, God forbid, it's borderline kofrut. Borderline kofrut. <coughs> Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, before he taught his students, he says, whoever thinks of God as a man, he's cursed. He's cursed. God does not have pieces. Okay, God is this pashut. He's simple. All right, Rav Tzion Bracha <coughs> used to say, "Ha pashut hu bakete." It's really a kabbalistic <coughs> idea. Anytime you see something pashut, simple, it's in kete. It's in the crown. <coughs> the simpler you are, the more in the crown you are. Right? The more you want to be more uh, 
the big, big yeah, the big shot. That's the more actually. Your malchut, malchut is really what's the last. It's the, it's the end. So it's chelik why comes with or pashut when he cries himself. What's what is this or pashut called? The sim the simple thing. The simple. It's called ensof. It's endless. Everything is Hashem. You're inside Hashem right now. Did you know that? You're inside Hashem. Or he's not inside us. Huh? He's, uh, he's, he surrounds us inside and us. he fills us. He is us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we are, we are we Yeah, we're, we're, he, he's our creator. Okay? He, he chose you as a Jew. Could you imagine that? There was no empty space. Shum avir panui. There was no air. <clears throat> there was no empty space. Everything was just ensof. Everything was the light of the ensof. Or pashut. Amazing. When he decided in his simple will, in his simple will, <coughs> What's Ratzon Pashu? What does that mean, a simple will? Sometimes, why does a person want to buy a house? Because somebody makes him do it, right? His, his, wife, his wife tells him, you know, we need a big house. Okay, I know I'm going to do it. Why do you want to eat? Your body is making you... Rrr, I want to eat. Ratzon Pashu is doing it because... Just for, uh, just for doing it. It's, there is no... It's just... It, there is no reason behind. It's no reason behind that you could fathom. It's just a ratzon pashut. Look at how he uses the word. It's a ratzon. It's a will. It's pashut. Everything in this world that Hashem does is because Am Yisrael asks for it. You should know that. Since then, there's been no or pashut. Everything from then on is only because we ask for it. If a Jew doesn't ask for it, it's not going to happen. You should know that. So it says. Uh, so you said that it's or pashut. Or pashut. Since the creation of man. Since the before the first light, the first thought to create the world was or pashut. That's it. After That's that, it. After, after that, everything is because we asked for it. So why does it say Huh? Once he decided to create the world, and the Esser Sfirot, the first Esser Sfirot, came into existence. Now, if he doesn't create the world, God forbid, there will be a blemish in his Ratzon Pashut. Because God doesn't make mistakes. And this is the part where people say, you know, this is not for me, you know. Because they, they're trying to understand the finite. Let's think about it like this. Everything is or and self. Okay? Once God decided to create the world, because it's, why did he want to create it? It's Pashut. You can't understand why. It's, a or pash, it's a Ratzon Pashut. It's a simple will. It's a simple will. At that moment, Ten spherot were created. Ten spherot. Keter. Ten lights. Chokma, Bina, Chaiset, Givura, Tifer, Netzach, Chod, Yesod, Malchut. Ten spherot were created. <coughs> before they were, before that's Nikudot, that's something else. You're, you're way into the creation. These are called the ten spherot that are Kimusot, that are in potential energy now. They're in potential energy. They haven't come yet into. Kinetic energy. They haven't come into fruition. Their S is Sfirot Akmusot. Now, once God decides to do this, let's, then God is going to say, you know what, let's scratch it. Let's not do it. Hmm. That's not God. He made, oh, he made a mistake. He made a mistake. Once he decides to do something, it has to happen. Because God doesn't make mistakes. So if a person, a person, Fell down the stairs. <coughs> you do know that God signed off on that, right? Approved. <laughs> Why did you do that to me? You know he doesn't make mistakes. If it happened, it means it had to happen. But how can we meet in Torah a place where it says God regretted that he created a human after wherever did it? He regretted. What's the... You're asking me some... You, first of all, we didn't even... We didn't even start the creation. You already asked me about the time of Noah. Let's deal with the first page before we get to Noah. You understand? We have a long time till Noah. I know we're already in Parashat Noah, but you have to. Let's deal with this first, okay? Now, once these ten Sifirot were Kumusot, they were as one in his bottled energy. Exactly, there was a bottled energy. Once it happened, 
Now, with this person, the simple will was to create the create the createes, right? For the known reason. What's that known reason? Hashem. It's a Pashut. It's a Raton Pashut. You gotta put a comma over there. You must put a comma over there. The he and it is Likare Rachum Vechanun to be called merciful. What is? Once God decided to create the world, that's called a Raton Pashut. It's a simple will. Once he decided to create the world, you, me, all of us over here, we came, we, yeah, we were alive in the potential inside Hashem. When he decided, when he did it, it's the same instant also. No, there's, yeah. no, there's no space between So that means basically, so, I mean, I don't want to get too crazy with you. So basically, past, present, and future doesn't oh. exist in God's world. So, yes. like we say in the, in the okay. Tehillim, Ki elev shanim, ki yomet wal ki right. Thousand years is like yesterday for him. Right. I mean, Lemashal. So that means... When, when Mashiach is going to come, what does King David say? It's as if we were dreaming the whole time. That means all this galut and everything, we're going to look, did we really suffer all of that? Because we're going to we're gonna get closer to Hashem. We're going to lose our sense of time. But once Hashem decides to create the world, now we're all here. So now God wants to be called merciful forgiving but once we're there before we were there he didn't need us right you understand before need, we were before titles. yeah he didn't need those titles because if he needs those titles he's not a sham god doesn't need us to call him god doesn't when god needs me he doesn't god doesn't need you but once the raton pashut kicked in and the esser spherot were there and we're all inside those esser spherot those 10 bottled up energies now Hashem says there is no king Without a nation, without a crown, right? and the king wants to be called. The king has to be called what? Merciful, giving. Why? Because a king that doesn't give, he's not a king. So there's a must, Hashem. There is a must to the esher sfirot hakmusot. There's something separate from Hashem. No, those esher sfirot kemusot are not separate from Hashem. There's something that's created. Okay. They're pashut. Then why are they? No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't take this raton pashut. Don't. Take this Ratzon Pashut and and confuse it with the Eser Sfirot. How do we know Eser Sfirot? Hakmusot. How do we know? If it doesn't say it, then how do, we, how do we know it's there? What? If it doesn't say in the book, then how do we know it's there? It says it in other books. There's Mavo Sharim, this and that. Because if I'm going to tell you that God wanted to be called, uh, God wanted to create the world for the Ratzon Pashut, which is to be called Rachum Vechanun. God's simple will is to be called Rachum Vechanun. It's like the Abod al that the infinite wanted to be limited to show how infinite it is. That even to, the infinite if God be wants to, no, if God wants to be called Rachum Vechanun, God wants to be called Merciful, that means He needs us. It means He wants to show how infinite it He means, is. It means, no. Why does He need to show us that? To show how infinite God is already infinite. He doesn't need us. It's, it's automatic. It's an automatic no, process. No, it's only automatic once He decided to create the world. Once He decided to create the world, now He has to be called Merciful. Because if he wouldn't be called merciful right now, he's not a shim. Now he's a giver. So now he's a, a giver. That's, that's a must. I'm now it's a must. To the Esher Sphero. Now you're saying Esher Sphero is something separate from God? I'm not saying Esher Sphero is something separate from God. See, that's, yeah, see, this is the part where, unfortunately, I don't want to say this, this is Chas Shalom because you're dealing with Male 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 Mata right now. You're not allowed to take this as a... It is not a philosophy. Really? It's not a philosophy. Nah, but it is. It's coming out philosophical. It's coming out philosophical. You have to understand the Ratzon Pashut to create the world, you can never know what that is. God doesn't need you to call him Rachum. He doesn't call, he need you to call him. What is Chanun? Forgiving. What does that mean? That we had to sin? Yeah. Why would he forgive only if we sin? sin? That word doesn't even exist. That word doesn't even exist yet. So that's that's those doesn't exist yet. So you can't say the application, the explanation that the infinite wanted to limit himself in order to show how infinite he is, that even then he could limit himself and show that there's a potential for limited. I mean, that's a nice thing to say. True, you could say God, but once again, it's only if somebody exists. Why does he need us to exist? No, it's to show how. There's, to, there's, to show who? There's no need. To show who? There's no, there's no there. need. Who says there was a need? Exactly. There's a desire. There's the, not, the, the that desire is, means what? It's not a need. Of course, it's a need. If I if I desire something, what does that mean? It doesn't mean you need it. Of course I need it. You want it. You want it. 
But that doesn't mean you're bound to it. God doesn't desire anything. God doesn't need anything. God doesn't need Am Yisrael. God doesn't need uh, God doesn't need anything. So how would you describe Rosh Hashanah? Right, I can't. That's the part where the Gemara Masechet Chagiga says, "Don't ask what's above you, what's below you, what's inside, what's in forward, malefani, malachor." That's that's the one thing you can't ask because that's the one thing that's infinite. That's the one thing you can't understand, and, and no amount of to limit himself this and that is going to ever explain that you can't explain something that's unlimited beyond it's can't. beyond us that means where the mind ends the emuna has to begin mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. so the ratzona pashut you can't understand but once the ratzona pashut created the esosphere are they separate are we separate from Hashem no do you do you think that you are yeah. Yes, that's what happened over here too. It's the same thing. Once you say that ten spherot were created, those ten spherot now have all the creations inside of them. You, me, our children, our grandchildren, Mashiach, Olam Abba, everything's inside over there. And what is our job? To take out the Hashgacha of Hashem. That's it. Our job is to show that the end self is really still here. There's no space between us. There's nothing in between us. There's no time. That's our, that's our job as a Jew. You understand? Then what happens next? Because if there isn't in the world somebody who will get mercy from him, how will he be forgiving? Once again, why is he forgiving? Only once he decided to create the world. Before he decided to create the world, he didn't need us to call us forgiving. He didn't need all that. It's only once he decided to create the world for the reason that we can't know. We can't know that reason. We can't, we can't even touch the end self. Okay? We can't even say God's name. Yudke Vavke. We're going to chas shalom even talk about the end self. It's impossible to talk about the end self. Same thing with all of Hashem's name. Elohim. Amonai. So what did he do? Now, to take these ten Sfirot HaKmusot into fruition, to create them, what does he have to do? Break them down. Once he decided to create the world, he has to create an illusion to show that he, as if he's not there. Time? Time. Space. First space. To create space, if he's everywhere, how is he going to make space now? If he's everywhere, how is he going to make space? He has to make a void, like a black hole. black hole. Now this black hole spits out things. Right. Sucks. Shows this is where this is where everything is. Everything is over here. All the galaxies, Atzilut, Biria, Itzira. Now there's all, there isn't only one of them, of one of each. There's billions of them. There's trillions of them. No, there's one black hole. It's one speck. It's a speck in the end so but this speck itself is Enzo. To us, the Erech us, it's as if it's endless. Why? Because it's, it's a speck inside something that's endless. And which makes it what? As if it's what? Endless too. I don't want to get philosophical. Okay? Is that why space is black per se? Huh? The fact that the space is empty. It's, but it's black because it's, the ain, it's not in the end self, it's in the. It's well, it's empty. The Ari calls it empty. Makompa. He doesn't call it shachor. He calls it empty. Like okay? space empty. Empty. Empty space. Like, uh, to create, to create, a, to create the creations, he has to cause. He has to make a space right. where he's not there. Have we given it? Oh, that's a great question. So, how could he not be somewhere? Right. It's a beautiful question. Is he really not there? That's that's my question. Is he really not here? <laughs> Is he really not here? He's here. Is it really an empty space? Yeah. Or he just makes it seem like it's empty? Oh, Could God create a rock that he can't pick up? Of course not. <laughs> but then he's not God. Right. That's the paradox. Right. So this empty space is what? It's Din. It's a new creation. It's, a, it's a, one of the... God is considered or a chesed in a way. Now he created something that created a boundary to his or and so. That's basically saying what? You can't come back in here. 
circle now here is the one question which we're not going to answer how could god create how could the how could god's creation which is din hold back himself if he's a creator if he's the creator of that <laughs> how could god which is or chesed or pashut or and so is that god is that a revelation of god or is that god this is or hadin no the outside dick. This is no, all. This is everything else is or and so. That, that's a revelation. It's or. So. It's or and so. So it's it's not really God Himself. It's revelation. Yeah, it's an or. Say or and so. Dari calls it and so. Am I right or wrong? No, it's or and so or and so. Which one? Outside of the halal is the or and so. Now, you're asking what is there a difference between or and so and the and so? That's a very deep question. That's like a question of mamash. Chasidus. It's a chasidish question. Emet. Class. Okay, <laughs> it's a it's a chassidish. There are different, you know, because the Ari will go from ensof to or ensof, or ensof, ensof. We don't find the Ari himself answers that question. Is there between the or ensof and the ensof? I know one thing that the or ensof is or chesed pashut, it's and right. God created or din. The Zohar calls it butzina de kardunita. This butzina de kardunita holds back his light from filling the void that he created. And the major question which the Mekubalim ask, how could this Butsina de Kardunita, which is stop the creator, which is Or Chesed, how could fire stop water? Well, God made it like that. So exactly. God, but it's, a, it's amazing I how know. inside the, the first step of this page is the answer to all of our problems in life. That God wants the two opposites to live, coexist. Co- to coexist. And he wants you to understand he's doing everything at the same time. It's, it's crazy. If he can do it, we can do it. Yeah, we have to do it as Jewish people. You are him. You, I mean, you're, you're, you're uh, Hashem created you and that's your job. Right? That's your job. What is the whole meaning of that? How could you love another Jew? I don't know the guy. I never met him. I see a Jew coming from uh, Ethiopia. How am I going to love this guy? That's our job. We have to, we have to, we have to, co- we have to constrict ourselves to allow other people inside. You understand? So to allow something to be created, first you have to what? Constrict yourself. Well, the Zohar says, Gil of Galifin. Does that also mean, let's see, the Kardunita? The Tzinat the Kardunita is the first, the Gil of Galifin. It's the first Tzimtzum, it's the Butzina de Kardunita. Now, later on, the Zohar will also call it the world of Bina Butzina de Kardunita. But the first Butzina de Kardunita, which is the major Koach din, where all Deans come from this Deen, is the Tzimtzum. This is called the Tzimtzum. It's the constriction, the first constriction. And this is the major life lesson over here. For anything to happen in life, anything good, to, for the creation to happen, first you have to have nothing. No, you have to go through a, a Yisurim. That's what this is. This is you have to reveal before Koach or Achesed to come back in here, which is what's going to happen afterwards. God will bring back His light inside of here. First, first you have to go through Din. Okay. Is the Tzimtzum process like a contract? Is it like a focus type of um, process where it's like everything's constricted into like? It's like a woman giving birth. So like, is it like a vacuum, like emptiness, or is it just everything constricting and like being focused into one point? It's a machloket, really. In the Hasidic sources, and the Kabbalistic sources, according to the Hasidic sources, all of the or and sof that was in here mm-hmm. goes, gets constricted inward into the middle point of this empty void. According to the Ariya Kadosh, it gets constricted everything out. Spits out. It's everything, I mean, this place is totally void. According to the Hasidic sources, Baal Shem Tov, and the way the Hasidim learn it, everything gets constricted inward. Is it, it, isn't black hole some? It like spits. It goes it's a in void. And spits out. It's, right. It's a void. It's, it's like an endless void. It, it goes like this, and then it goes like this. Why are we saying that the Enzo can be constricted? Huh? It's, it's, it's the end so the part. truth is, I'm going to end with this. With this over here, it's, <clears throat> I'm going to end with this sentence because it's already very late. It says over here, where did he constrict himself? In his middle point, in the center. So that means what the Hasidim are right. There's no Mokko. Okay. What does that mean? It means that he constricted himself. There's a center, there's a top, there's a bottom. Okay. Once there is space, there's a top, bottom, and a center. 
So you already constructed. Okay, the so this is an empty board. space right now. Okay. God constricted. It says bin. What is bin nikudat amerkaz? What's be? The prefix bin in Hebrew inside the middle point. So the middle point is inside the void. Right? So according to the Hasidic sources, this middle point, the word emtsait, it's in the book Zohar Chai, the Rebbe Mikomarna. He writes, the word emtsait is also the numerical value of Torah. You know, this, you know, this light that was in here that went inside the middle point is the Torah. Is the Torah. The only thing that's the closest thing to Hashem in this world, if you want to see Hashem, Torah. is the Torah. Open the Torah. Open the Torah. That's the Hasidic sources. But... According to Rabbi Udaptaye, there's a typo over here. It's not Benikudat Amerkaz, it's Menikudat Amerkaz. From the middle point he constricted. That means the, everything was the middle and he think everything out. Why would he, why would he to say that? that the, because according to the Rashash and according to the Ari, I mean, the, with the, the way the Ari is going to show himself later on, according to the Chamei Bet El, this, this void is totally void. The or and stuff that was in there can't even stay. There's it's nothing not, in there. It doesn't make sense. So that, it, that, that doesn't make sense. You're just saying that that light that was inside, you constructed it. How can you then construct a light that's and so? You focused it. No, but you're no. constructing it. You're still making it limited. So that's exactly. You have to it. ask me a better question. How could God constrict himself in his middle point if he's endless? Is that himself or is it or? That's exactly what I was saying. Huh? Is that himself or is or? Yeah. You're going back to the. Is it or and or and so? I can't. Good brain stretching. Up and down. It's the same light, but you're making it from bigger to smaller. Okay, but we're talking about endless now. We're not talking about. Lupa. But it's the same exact idea. Guys, let's not let's not lose focus. Okay, let's deal with the let's deal with the main question over here. What's the main question? How can Hashem, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the Ensof, constrict himself in his midpoint? In his mid, if you go according to the Mikubalim, where he constricted himself from his midpoint, okay. from his midpoint means what? The center. From his from his center. Yeah. Mm. Something that endless has a center. No. But no. Created the, that space. So center from that space, the I'm gonna tell you what Rabbi Shimon Agassi answers. Okay. And this is this is the this is an answer. Where you have to understand, this is the answer according to the Mekubali, Chachmei Bet El. This is the way they learn it. All this stuff, when we say or and sof, and sof, light, constriction, these are all mashalim. This is all a mashal. We, we're never going to get the nimshal. We're never going to get the main point here, the, the truth. Really? We're never going to, it's impossible to get the nimshal. They say the Ramchal reached it and Maybe, maybe great Hasidic masters reached it. We are not going to get there. The point of okay? I'm going to tell you guys one thing. What's the nimshal? Maybe it's something we can understand. God is koach bilti bal tachlit. God doesn't have a purpose. God doesn't have a purpose. Because if he had a purpose, he, God forbid, he's, he's, he's limited. He's limited. Because once you fulfill your purpose, then you're done. Right? Because there's the purpose to find. Huh? Yeah. Who says the purpose defines you? I mean, you gotta look I at the logical way. The void is what the koach adin is koach bal tachlit. It's it's a, it's a being with a purpose. What's its purpose? To stop the light of God from going back in. When God said He created it, He made this in His midpoint. He's not talking about an actual midpoint. Not something in space and time. He's talking about a power that's in between having a purpose and not having a purpose. Could God, God will create a being that has a purpose and at the same time doesn't have a purpose. That's called the midpoint. That means in life you're going to go, you, you, a human being, you're going to go through a, a point in life where you're going to have a midlife crisis. Mm. Do you want to have a purpose? Do you have a purpose? Or do you not have a purpose? That's a creation. To think like that is a creation. Your thoughts, God puts them inside your head. That means God wants you to think like that. The choice is yours. But the thoughts inside your head, God puts them. Once Rav Chaim Vital was crying. He was crying. Rav Chaim Vital was crying. He said, Hashem, how come you don't let me do Teshuvah? The Ari Swami says, don't ever say that again. He says, why? He says, who do you think put inside your head the idea of doing teshuvah? Okay. 
Hashem put that inside your head. Inside this void, all the beings in here, all the olamot, malachim, human beings, shiva aratzot, all these things have a choice. That choice to do or not to do, that free will is, is nikuda ha'emtsait. That's the midpoint. Free will is a creation that God created. That's what it means, according to Shimon Agassi, that God created the halal in his midpoint. That means you could be like Hashem, at the same time, you could not be like Hashem. You have that choice. You have free will. That's what free will is. It's a creation that God creates. Nikudayim Tzayit. Over here we're going to end. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen. Karachi. Amen.